Self makes Bronx something special. The Big Crown point to date is an iconic watch in the in the Oris collection since 80 years, more than 80 years right now. And this year, another time, we're going to use Bronx not only for the uh, for the case itself, we have used on the Carter Shear watch, so we're also going to use Bronx for the dial. We have to find a way how we're going to realize this. How are we going to have the oxidation on the on the dial? And how can we stop the oxidation? If the oxidation is going to happen too much, small pieces. of the dial can get into the movement. And this can have the, the final reaction that the movement can stop. So we have to find a way that we're going to produce a Bronx dial, that we have the oxidation on the Bronx dial in a certain kind of limit. And then we can stop the oxidation by, uh, by uh, a an, an special process. Bronx is an alloy, of course, and uh, we have a certain kind of uh, combination material mixed. We're making a research, then we find out that the Bronx hams had been used by the diving at that time. They are salt water resistant and they have a good mechanical uh, usage. And then following up, we thought this, this is good an iconic material. So we had uh, this kind of experience that this kind of uh, combination brings us the best opportunity between machining, surface finishing and long lasting of the material. There's a big difference between stainless steel, which is not anti-magnetic, but with the combination with oxygen, the bronze color changed. On each single piece, the patina is different, which will be created to the usage of the consumer. Some they go swimming, some they go went to the sauna. The sweat gives a combination with the, with the surface of the Bronx, you're getting more brownish. Depends on the behavior of the, of the client, of the consumer, the patina of the watch will change. This is really, we go our own way. With all our power we have and our passion we have here in Holstein. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Welcome everyone to another edition of Time Together Watch Talks. I'm Nick Peckman, president of JB Hudson and fellow watch enthusiast. And tonight with us, of course, we have our distinguished and very knowledgeable watch manager, David Branke. And David put together a nice presentation for you tonight that I'm sure you will all enjoy. Tonight, we're talking Oris. But first things first, last week and the week prior, we, we had uh, videos on Longines and IWC watches, and we announced a special giveaway opportunity for those of you who decided to like and share our videos on Facebook. And I'm happy to announce tonight that the winners were drawn. Stephanie B won the $300 JB Hudson gift card, and David T won the new Longines watch. Congratulations to the winners. We'll be in touch shortly to arrange uh, courier deliveries to you of those items. And we thank you very much for liking and sharing. And you could be a winner too, if you just, after the video tonight, like and share the video. We appreciate your support very much and thank you for being here. Uh, I'd also like to uh, mention that we have a couple of very wonderful guests with us tonight. So this is a special treat for David and I. We, we bring with us tonight, uh, Jason. He's the Midwest uh, representative for Oris Watches, a wonderful addition to the crew tonight and a lover of bourbon, uh, among other things, and a wonderful guy. And then we have VJ Geronimo. He is the US CEO for Oris Watches, another wonderful gentleman and an avid Yankees fan, I may say, which might not bode so well here in Minnesota. Sorry. We lost the Yankees a few times. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, they, they've stood in our way too often, but, uh, but Vijay is a wonderful gentleman and uh, oh, he can't watch baseball right now. He's very happy to join us tonight. So with that, welcome everyone. David, take it away. Let's learn about Oris. So let's take you way back uh, to 1904, where Oris is founded by Paul Patton and Georges Christian uh, in a very small town, kind of southwest of Holstein, or of uh, Basel, it's called Holstein. Uh, they, ran the co he, they ran the company until 1928 when Oscar Herzog came along um, and took over the helm, who had a very long stint um, with Oris. He was there from 1928 to 1971. Within his tenure, the birth of one of uh, the favorites of our store, the Oris Big Crown, 1938, which, if I'm not mistaken, with the exception of the uh, Jaeger Reverso, is one of the longest running production watches uh, in watchmaking history, having been made for that many years straight through. Later in its time frame in the late 90s, I believe it was, um, the red rotor came to be a signature of Oris watches. So when you look at every Oris watch and you flip over the back to see the sapphire crystal, you will see the signature red rotor on the back of the watch. So Oris is a very important brand to us. We, we love the people that are involved with it, um, Jason and VJ. Uh, we've met others on our trips over to Switzerland and really enjoy uh, how personable they are and what they do for us as a store. I've never had anything that I haven't been able to do for a client based on what we've asked and what they able to, they're able to come through for. Uh, there's five reasons uh, that they are very proud of and we're very proud to be associated with why you should own an Oris watch. Since 1904, they're still independent. Many watch companies have to, off, uh, have to answer to board of directors, have to answer to stockholders. Oris does not have to. They are in control of absolutely everything in their company from start to finish, all the different production, everything that they do is decided on by the core group of people. It is this sense of independence that gives them the capability, capability to do that. These are the three people over in Switzerland who are in charge. Ralph Studer and Claudia Gertzler are the CEOs and Ulrich Herzog is the chairman of the board. He all very well versed in watchmaking and very passionate about their brand. Every Oris is a mechanical timepiece. They do not do any quartz watches. This was a decision that they made uh, around the quartz crisis when everybody was panicking and deciding that they needed to jump on the quartz bandwagon. Oris decided that they didn't want to do that. They wanted to only make mechanical watches and that is still true to this day. Their products are innovative and their desire to manufacture pieces is genuine. Every piece is made with passion and love and designed with the end user in mind. And they are very proud to be Swiss. Uh, they, they take the Swiss watchmaking history and culture and provenance very seriously. So this is something they are proud to do and carry on within their timepieces. 
And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the novelties. Um, I'll ask Jason or VJ to help me out with that. Jason, you wanna, you wanna take that? Yeah, so we've got, uh, um, what you see here is our Aquas collection, which is our contemporary diver. Um, the Aquas collection, uh, especially in North America, is our number one selling segment. Um, in the upper left, you've got um, the Aquas GMT, which was uh, a new release for 2019. I believe in the center is the Lake Baikal, um, which is a limited edition uh, that's part of our island conservation series. And then the piece in the bottom left is our Aqua State, which is our number one selling SKU in America in the bottom left. Big crown. All right, so you mentioned uh, the big crown was originated uh, in the US in 1938. Um, it's been also very popular again in the previous uh, few years. Uh, the piece in the center is the solid bronze case, bronze dial. Um, we also have some different iterations. Uh, I see a two-tone um, bronze bezel piece upper right, and then the blue dial um, piece on the right side as well. So the price points of the Big Crown range anywhere from 1750 to 2100. Um, 40 millimeters, dome sapphire crystal. Uh, many, many people like the Big Crown because of the design of the dot, of the date and how it's bal very balanced and with the pointer function, which is an Oris complication. And then the large cathedral hands and that sort of thing really, really make it a, a favorite among uh, watch enthusiasts and collectors. Yeah, I'm particularly fond of this watch just because the styling has remained so similar and and true to the original version, whether the hands or or the style of the bezel or the crown or what have you. It's just a very iconic, classic, timeless type watch and very wearable. Uh, a favorite of many is the... Uh, the Diver 65. So this is our vintage uh, dive series. We, um, we originally came back with this watch um, in 2016. Um, they range anywhere from 36 millimeters to 42. Um, last year, we had a lot of success with the watch in the upper left, which is the uh, bicolor. So that is a um, solid bronze top ring. And then the bracelet is also a solid bronze center link. So it gives it a really cool two-tone look uh, without utilizing gold, which is kind of something that's unique. Um, the also the piece uh, below that with the green dial has a bronze uh, steel or aluminum and bronze top ring. So you can see the outer edge of the, of the bezel gives that touch of bronze. Uh, which is really pretty. The, the Diver 65 is, is our, our, uh, our sort of flagship uh, vintage piece in the, in the collection. One thing I wish I would have done on my bronze piece uh, was to have taken pictures on a daily basis because the patina just comes out of nowhere and really develops into a, a very vintage looking watch. It's very fun to see it change on a weekly basis. I'm actually I'm actually wearing the original um, the Carbashir, the original bronze Carbashir, and I don't know if you can see that well, but the patina on the watch from I haven't done I haven't cleaned it since I got it, and uh, so you kind of get a sense for that for that patina on it. So. Yeah, Jason, I'm uh, especially fond of this particular model too. So I have the. Uh... Diver 65 black yep. dial with the bronze bezel and the riveted bracelet. And to be honest with you, when I first saw this timepiece, I immediately kind of fell in love with the styling of it. I really appreciate vintage watches and the color of the patina that was used for the hands and the markers really appealed to me. The dial is glossy, but it's not, it's not, uh, it, it, it's not too reflective, if that makes sense. I appreciate that. I love how mm -hmm. the piece 
hidden at six. And then the things that just make it for me on this watch um, that others don't do for me, the domed crystal is fantastic. It's just the right type of dome. It doesn't have a box at the end. Obviously it has a screw down crown because it is a true dive watch. And then the riveted bracelet, it's tapered, it's solid. It has a very secure, secure clasp. To me, this is like quintessential Oris all in one package. It's functional and it's affordable and it looks good. And it, it's kind of, for me, when I look at this watch, it's like, you know, you almost forget about the other watches in your collection, to be honest with you. It is a very wearable, functional, everyday, awesome watch. And I'm really proud to own it. And it really kind of helped, but you know, having the brand, um, it really put the brand on the radar of a lot of people, this Diver 65. So we're, we're very proud and very grateful for this, for this watch. And I also like how you have continued to improve the model. So not big sweeping functional changes, but just little subtle changes like coming out with the model and then the bronze bezel and then the riveted bracelet and then the, the solid bronze bezel with the bronze uh, uh, bracelet and now different dial colors and now another watch that you're going to talk about later. But I, I've loved watching the evolution of the model too. I think mean, it's really a smart piece. Yeah, I don't know how great you can see it, but I, I have uh, at my desk here the um, chronograph that was introduced last year. So that's the Diver 65 chrono, 43 millimeters. It's got the bronze also. So next we have the Pro Pilot collection and the uh, the piece in the upper right was our um, our big launch from the fall of last year. That's the um, Caliber 115 PPX. So that's an in-house movement, um, fully skeletonized. It's a 10 days power reserve, manual wind, um, and it's fully titanium bracelet case movement. Um, that's really uh, a beautiful piece. Um, also there you have the GMT timer, which is the watch that I'm wearing today. So it's a, a, a GMT with a rotating timing bezel, which is a really cool piece. And then we have our Pro Pilot date and day date. So we do the watch in a couple different sizes. Uh, the piece on the bottom is 45 millimeter day date. And then the smaller version is the 41 millimeter date. This is the 41 millimeter date, if you can see that. And the clasp folds over. All right. You want to talk about this one, Beach? Yeah, sure. This is the Lake Bacal. So this is in the Aquas collection. Um, each year we've, we've done a piece for over a decade now regarding um, ocean conservation, water conservation, that sort of thing. Last year, if you guys recall, we came out with the Aquas date relief, um, which was that red strap piece. And um, we, we made that in conjunction for um, Ernst Bromeis, who was a Swiss endurance swimmer and his mission was to swim Lake Bacal last summer um, with the hope of raising awareness about the importance of water um, and that sort of thing. He actually didn't, he started his swim, he was supposed to be about six weeks, he lasted about 12 days and then he had some uh, health issues so he had to stop but we became familiar with Lake Bacal through that and um, this watch this year is in partnership with, um, with the Lake Bacal Research Foundation and what it is, is all the, all the pieces we've made have been around sort of warmer water things. Um, lake Bacal is in Siberia, it's very cold. It's the largest freshwater lake in the world. Actually it holds 20% of the uh, world's fresh, uh, drinkable fresh water. Um, so this dial is meant to be something that's a cool ice blue as opposed to a warm sort of warm blue. Uh, so you see that in, in the, in the dial itself. The pictures don't really do the watch justice. I mean, to see it in person is really, really, really cool. And then um, the case back is actually, it has, it looks like frozen ice 
and that's how the, that's what the design of the case back is about. So, yeah, that's a limited piece, and it's uh, it's been out, and it's been really really well received. So, I love that one. So, um, next is you know each year or two, Oris does um, a jazz series piece, or we we try to do one each year. Um, I think we've done about 19 pieces now for the for the past um, how many years I want to say since the early 90s nah, yeah since the mid 90s we've done we've done a piece so the two pieces we actually did two this year there's the Art Blakey and there's the James Morrison um, James Morrison from Australia um, but the Art Blakey piece I actually have it here it uh, Art Blakey was a drummer. Um, he's very famous for a group called the Jazz Messengers. And um, they were basically, he was a leader and, and he taught a lot of young jazz musicians. So the Messengers were kind of this group of people that there's been over, I think, 60 or so in and out of his group, um, different Messengers. So we launched this launch last year in New York with a, um, at, the, at the Birdland Jazz Club with Art Blakey's son. And so each year we do these pieces, but what we try to do is give subtle nods to the artist and put things in the watch, but not make it very over the top or in your face. So if you notice um, the top of this watch, the inner ring, it's, it's modeled after a drum, a drum head. So you kind of get that feeling for it, but you don't pick up on it right away when you look at it. Um, and then the hands are very much like drumsticks and um, the case back is a symbol. So the gold, like a symbol of a drum. So that's, some of the design nods this is a 38 millimeter piece. This is a beautiful watch. And a lot of people think of Oris, they think of Oris as all, you know, a lot of sports watches, pilots watches, but we do make a lot of beautiful um, pieces like this as well. I, I think both of these are really cool because they're like nothing else in the collection. Like they just, they completely stand out and they're very unique uh, when you, when you see them in person for sure. So this is a special one actually. So this is, um, we were talking about the Diver 65 before. Um, this is a collaboration we just launched with Momotaro Jeans of Japan. Um, for those of you who don't know, Japan is, is probably one of the, if not the largest denim capital in the world. A lot of kind of really quality denim obviously comes from the US, also comes from Japan. And um, the, the Japanese industry really started from, you know, U.S. service members being in Japan after, in World War II and their denim and their jeans kind of being recognized. And there were, for a long time, those jeans were sold in the vintage shops of Japan and, and they sort of developed this really strong jeans culture. So we, um, we partnered with Momotaro, it was a company that started in the early 90s in Japan. Um, and they're one of the premier Japanese jeans brands. They're a family owned company, much like Oris. Um, their mantra is all about product, the way they make the product. It's very quality driven. It's quality without compromise. And they still make the, the yarn on these vintage looms. So it's really, uh, really long. And um, they basically, you know, the, the looms are really long looms and they, they hand um, diet. So it's, it's really a process. So we were, we, we got in touch with them and we kind of talked to them and really found out just how similar we are as companies. So this collaboration, which I'm going to say this, this watch just came into the U S today. Um, I was expecting it so with all that's been going on. It hasn't, it hasn't made it to us yet. So I'm going to open it for you. So, and it's a unique, so it comes, see it with a kit with a Momotaro um, Oris cloth. And then it comes in this package, which is a jean um, denim material. This is made by Momotaro, this pouch itself. So it has their signature battle stripes on each pair of their jeans. They have these battle stripes that are um, hand put onto them, painted onto the jeans. And then in the case, if you open it up, there's also each, each of the jeans are made custom to order. And then they hem them with this hemline. So that's the design cues that you see here. And then the watch itself um, is this beautiful green dial. If you 
can see it there. And then it also has the same battle stripes and it's a denim strap. So if you kind of get the sense of what that is, if you guys can see that. So it's, it's a really, it's a beautiful piece. It's a beautiful watch. It's really cool. It's, so, it's also a, uh, a no date 65, which is something that's pretty unique too. Most, yeah. most of them are, uh, yeah. are dates. But the dial has this fade onto it, this green fade and the color really matches well to it. So yeah, it's really cool. So you got to see it first in person. V VJ, that's awesome. You were able to do an unboxing for us live. I, you know, uh, before this, I wasn't aware that it was even available out in the U.S. yet. So this is really cool. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. So this, this strap is really interesting. I wasn't familiar with the Jean brand before I read about the watch um, out there in social media. But the two white stripe thing was kind of interesting that it's also integrated to the strap. And that strap, I, I see that's black with kind of some white undertone. It's is that, um, is that white, pretty visible in person coming through it. The white, the white um, battle stripes. Uh, yeah, not only the battle stripes, but then just where the black material is. I see oh, it's got a yellow stitch, and it kind of has it does uh, I, white peeking through. Yeah, and yeah. it does a little bit. And then also, it's actually it's actually a denim blue. So the strap. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah. you can't tell because the light with my light is not the best here. So. Um, but it's a denim blue and this will get a fade to it. So as you wear it, it will fade. So yeah, it's, it's, it's very much cool that way. And it's like, it's like the stripe, the uh, stitching of the jeans as well on it. So, yeah. Beautiful dial, great strap. Yeah. 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 So really cool dial. Look, at, I think if you wear this for a while, it'll be, it'll be really interesting. And this pouch is really, really neat and it comes with a little wallet case too like a little and these are all made by hand by momentaro in japan so yeah all right um the next piece we'll talk about is the carries fort reef limited edition so this piece um was actually we launched this piece in january we announced this piece in january um so for those of you who are not familiar with the Carries Fort Reef or the Coral Restoration Foundation, they are an organization in the Florida Keys. And what they do is they restore the coral reefs. They have a technique, whereas they grow coral on these PVC, they look like almost like PVC trees. And they take a piece of coral and they plant it at the top. And then over the time, they move it down the PVC tree till it gets to the bottom and it grows to this, um, this, basically it takes about nine months and it grows into this coral uh, plant that they then harvest and then they replant it back into the coral they sow it literally sow it and sort of epoxy it back into the coral and it 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 grows the coral again so they've this carries for it is the project they've been working on for five years they've they've outplanted about thirty thousand corals into that uh, reef and they've basically regenerated the whole reef so it's the signature project that they've had um that's why on the back of the watch, you'll see it says over 30,000 planted. And um, the idea of this gold piece was we did a watch with them back in 2017. And the piece did really well. They hold a gala each year, a charity gala. And those uh, two pieces did really well for them. It raised a lot of money, the first two pieces of it. So we said, when thinking about a second one, what could we do that would be really auctionable and really help them raise a lot of money? So we made this really limited... 50 piece limited edition in 18 karat gold. And that's, and that's what you see. That's the, that's the, uh, the result of that. So um, yeah, we're really excited about, about it. So they're, they're getting a few of them to do um, to use in their auction efforts as well. Um, and then little sneak peek, uh, there will be a steel version of this piece coming as well. So that's uh, you'll, you'll see that uh, relatively soon from us. So, yeah. But this is another watch in person. It's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, it is. Yeah. So and then you know, just talking about the company and our and our way we go about projects and things. You know, we we have a conservation focus, and we've always been this way. And you know, it's not because it's something that in, in the past few years it's become cool to become like this. We've been doing this for a long time. It's very much who we are as a, as a company. So we, and we try to find these projects which are small enough that 
you know, they make sense. They're very, you know, and, and by us telling the story and helping bring the, bringing their story out to the world, it helps the organization. So, you know, we, not that we don't work with larger organizations, but we try not to work with super large organizations or super bureaucratic organizations. We really try to get to the ones that we are help would really make a difference. So we've done many of these projects over the time, but you know, the Carl Restoration Foundation, um, the Reef Restoration in Australia, um, we've done a whole bunch of different ones, Pacific Garbage Screening, the Clean Ocean that you see there, that unique machine in the middle. So um, yeah, we've done, we've done a number of them over time. So it's been really, uh, really cool. So, you know, and we've, we've become known for that and, you know, that's, that's how we are. Um, and we, we try to act very much that way. And it's not just in the product, it's not just in the causes, but things like our, you know, some of our boxes come with um, the algae driven box or the reduced footprint of our boxes. We're trying to do that. So instead of a big box made of plastic, you know, or, or plastic additives, we're trying to find ways to reduce our packaging and our footprint, make things useful. Jason's showing you the pouch, uh, similar to the jeans pouch, but that's what a lot of the watches are now coming in. The big crowns are coming in that pouch. So we want to make something that's functional and usable, but also um, certainly not wasteful. So, yeah. So. All right. Yeah, and then you've seen the different editions as we've talked about. Um, so the source of life up on the in the top left, the date relief I was speaking about with Ernst Burmeis on the right, uh, the clean ocean in the middle there, um, and then that's the Great Barrier Reef uh, three on the right side there. So that was for the Reef Restoration Foundation. Those are some things from last year. So yeah. But, so all right. Can't hear you, Nick. Nick, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you again to VJ and Jason for joining us. Now, I would like to announce we will be we will be doing another giveaway for those who like and share this video. David, did you want to mention what we'll be giving away this time? You're muted. Jimmy. <laughs> You're still muted. <laughs> David, you're muted. <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. Welcome <laughs> back. Thank you. Uh, so we will be giving away an Oris, surprisingly enough, and we will be giving away an F1 Williams uh, that we had day date that we happen to have. Uh, so if you like and share our video with uh, three people, we will uh, look that up and we will award that at our next uh, Thursday event, which is next week, which right. we will be doing a uh, pre event, kind of trying to figure out how to do that. So stay <laughs> tuned. It'll be fun. For those of you that did join the call on Zoom, we'll be breaking out into a general discussion session. So please join us for that right after this. And for everyone on the call, thanks again. We love positive online reviews. If you had a good experience, please drop us a message and uh, we'll look forward to joining you next time. Thank you very much for having us and thank you for us being here. Thanks, wait, guys. Wait, hold thank on. You. No, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Just to thank fit you very, in. I want to I fit in it. with everybody. Thank you very much it. for having us. So right. really nice to be here and thank you all for joining and, and having us on board. So, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. All stay right. safe. Stay positive out there. There's a bright side coming. All right. Yes, there is.